presentation. Thank you, Mudassar. Thank you, Carl, and for the kind introduction. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, virtually <laughs> in Manchester and Liverpool. And uh, of course, after one year and a half of COVID, um, there is no need in the, in, to, to motivate research in epidemic spreading. We all know the relevance uh, of this, um, this research. And uh, there have been uh, in this year a lot of approaches to study um, epi epidemic spreading and to try to ans answer many of the questions related both to the um, mechanism by which an epidemic spread and the policies that uh, needs to be adopted to uh, suppress the epidemics. I'm, I'm very happy to talk about this subject today when some of the lockdown restrictions have been lifted. And um, this, I think, is a good time to put um, the research question into uh, a certain kind of perspective and try to, um, to see what can we learn from the theoretical point of view from, from the experience um, that we got. So, um, yes, so the theoretical question that I, I, I've been asking myself in this, uh, in this year um, have been related to different aspects of, of the spreading and a different also timing at which this question has ar ever arised. So one question which arise in the uh, spring, summer 2020 was uh, related to plateaus. So that some of these um, very studied time series about number of cases or removed individual in the population uh, look like a long plateau, which uh, were not really typical of model in epidemic spreading. And so we work with Filippo Radicchi trying to understand questions related to this plateau. And in this context, we use a very minimal assumption um, and this is one of my rare paper without a network. We just look at well-mixed population and we study this, um, this, uh, this phase that we interpreted as a critical epidemic spreading, but a critical epidemic spreading, not starting with a single seed, but starting from many infected individuals. And then we ask question about the stochasticity, the role of the prediction, how can we predict the length of this plateau? Is there limitation due to fluctuation that, um, that uh, arise in this context? Second question we ask was a little bit later, maybe in the, in the autumn of uh, last autumn, and was related to uh, the presence and release of some of the contact tracing app, at least in, in Europe and uh, UK. And then um, together with my student, Anlin Soon and some collaborators from Spain, um, Alex Arenas and Giacomo Rapizardi, we studied a theoretical model, um, this time defined on networks, um, in which we uh, practically um, investigated the role of the app, uh, you know, a stylized app, an app that has immediate effect in mitigating uh, the spread. And here, one of the research question is, what is the, was a, a lot of debate at the time was, what is the percentage of uh, adoption of the app we should require to have an effect? And our answer is that also a, a, a percentage that is far from 100% adoption can be effective in mitigating the spread. And the third work I want to mention about is related to uh, 
my research on multi-layer network that has been, um, and this, this actually is one work which preceded the COVID period and um, addressed the role of correlation in shaping uh, the epidemics, uh, the critical property of the epidemic spreading on multi-layer networks. So first of all, so we start from very general approach in which we consider a well-mixed population. This is uh, the most stylized uh, approach in which we have agents that are susceptible, infected or removed that can all interact with uh, each other. So this can, can define a, a, an environment in which the, there are the, the possibility of contact is quite widespread and there is no knowledge of a contact network. And um, of course, the susceptible individual are individuals which uh, are not infected, but they can get the infection. Infected individuals are individuals that are infected and can spread the infection. And removed individuals are individuals which add the infection and cannot longer acquire one or spread um, the virus. So there are two processes. Either a susceptible individual enters in contact with an infected and at rate beta, it gets infected, or an infected individual with rate mu is removed. That means that um, is either immunized or, you know, unfortunately uh, dead. So this model uh, has admits a deterministic equation. We have seen this equation uh, uh, in the news, I think, um, more and more. So the order parameter is the ratio between beta and mu and um, the, the fraction of susceptible infected and removed individual, the sum of this fraction is, is one. And the trend that we want to observe uh, from, from this deterministic equation is that after an initial uh, dynamics, uh, which in the original stochastic model is quite affected by fluctuation, then if um, lambda is sufficiently high, there is an exponential increase in the number of infected individuals, a well-defined peak uh, due to herd immunity. This means that a large fraction of the population is, is removed, so cannot get any more the infection. And finally, um, after that, the number of impacted individual decays and the outbreak ends when there are no any more infected individual in the population. So, um, so in, in statistical mechanics, we study what happens when this control parameter changes lambda. So what I discussed before is what happens when lambda is greater than one in this well-mixed population. For lambda less than one, there are, you know, the, the spread starts with some fluctuation, but then dies down. So there is uh, an absorbing phase. And there is uh, the fraction of remove individual at the end of the break is infinitesimal in an infinite population. And then we have this particular point uh, uh, for lambda equal to one, when the reproduction number are not is equal to one, when we have uh, an outbreak, uh, we have a, a lot of stochastic effect and the outbreak can be infinite, include an infinite population. So a population that includes, increase with the network size, but still is uh, an infinitesimal fraction. So it doesn't increase linearly in N, it's uh, sublinear in N. So uh, if you look at the onset, so what happens in this deterministic approach at the onset of the epidemics, we see uh, an exponential increase in the supercritical phase, a subcritical phase with a exponential decrease of the number of infected individual and a critical phase in which the infected individual remains uh, constant. So uh, 
Of course, uh, at the early, at the beginning of the epidemics, this exponential growth was clear, very clear from many data sets, and I was not uh, immune from doing some of these plots. And the research goes on, and uh, there was a lot of comics also coming out of this because there were so many exponential um, plot plotted in, in, in papers. But actually, there were also other functional uh, that have uh, been explored. And there has been a lot of discussion also about this power law growth. And the first probably power law growth that has been observed was in this paper by, by Bob Ziff, Ziff and Ziff in which they saw in China in the February, March 2020, they saw a power log row with an exponent slightly bigger than two. And uh, there is a other result I include year only one related to the UK in which this uh, exponent close to two was seen also uh, during um, the sp late spring in UK. So this is, was the time in UK when the cases were plateauing. Of course, we this data needs to always be taken care, you know, taken with a with a little of cautions. Uh, you know, we we know that there have been a lot of problem about sampling and things like that, but uh, the data were practically plateauing. So the question is, uh, and this plateau was not really predicted by the theory. This looks very different from the plot that I show you at the beginning of a very well-defined peak, right? Because we were far from herd immunity and this plateau was due to the measure taking place uh, at that time. So uh, how can we predict the length of such plateau reached by containment measure? Um, is this power law of cases associated to the plateau behavior and how to quantify the role of stochasticity in determining the, the duration of this plateau? So we have tried to ask this question in a paper with Filippo Radicchi. And so we started with um, a study of the deterministic equation, which tell us that practically in order to have a plateau, you need to be close to criticality and you need to have a fraction of uh, susceptible individual at the time zero when this uh, critical behavior starts that is quite large. So you need to be far from herd immunity. So what we did is we took this deterministic time series and we studied the curvature of you know, this peak, this peak uh, as a second derivative there. And we study the value of this second derivative um, as a function of lambda and as a function of the initial number of susceptible individual. And you see that this curvature is uh, close to zero when lambda is close to one and where the initial in, um, susceptible individual is also close to one so that most of the population is, is susceptible. So to have an idea here we plot in panel, in, plot, in, in panel A, we plot the infected individual as a function of time in the deterministic approach for different lambda. And we see how it, uh, as lambda decrease, how is the plateau is, is broadening. And in the second plot, we are at criticality and we plot the deterministic equation of the infected individual as a function of time for different initial seed. So, the idea is that we, uh, at, at the beginning, the, the epidemics was spreading exponentially and then we re reached this plateau because of containment measures. So lambda was changed to an effective critical value, lambda equal to one. And then we, we started 
uh, this phase at criticality, so with just uh, a reproduction number equal to one, but starting from a number of infected individual that was different from a single seed because we started from this uh, initial part re dynamics that was exponentially increasing. So we studied not only the deterministic part, but also the stochastic effect. And if you look at, uh, you simulate a critical SIR model, you see that from realization to realization, the number of infected individual plateau, but plateau and they have very different duration. And also you see that the number of removed individual uh, increase as a power law. And so the reference um, framework uh, for stochastic dynamics, epidemics dynamics, is the branching process. So you have an infected individual, it can infect uh, zero, one or two individual at the next generation year, every generation it, it impacts two individual, but we are actually interested in the critical branching process in which the expected number of um, offsprings of this branching process is, is one. So, um, and the critical, uh, critical behavior where the num expected number of branches at the next generation is one is strongly affected by fluctuation. So there is a distribution of the outbreak that follows a power law with an exponent three, three over two. So very, very, very much fluctuating. Also the first moment diverge and the duration of the critical upgrade decay as t to the minus two, again, with diverging first moment. So um, there were some results uh, by Ben Naim and Krapiski showing that actually, uh, since there is this divergence in a finite population, so if you impose that there are an individual, then there is a cutoff that depends on the network size. And then this, the, the size, the expected size of the outbreak increase like the population to one third. So, uh, is increasing with n, although is uh, sublinear dynamics, and the duration increase like logarithm of n. But interesting, if you look at the standard deviation, the standard deviation both for the outbreak size and duration is very big. So there is a lot of fluctuation there. So this is dominated by stochastic event. So what we did is to go back to this theory and change, uh, change this model by uh, giving an interpretation that the plateau is a critical stage induced by the containment measure. So essentially we take the minimal assumption that is, uh, is just uh, a critical dynamics with an initial number of seeds that is greater than one. So typically the branching process has always started with one infected individual to start the epidemics at criticality, but here we want to study the effect of having more than one infected individual at the beginning of this critical dynamics. And of course you can do the deterministic approach and in this deterministic approach, the number of infected individual is constant. So the removed individual increase linearly in time. So you would not expect super linear growth of removed individual in time. But actually, if you take a stochastic approach and you include a, um, a multiplicative noise, then at criticality, the dynamics is only driven by multiplicative noise. And you see that uh, the scaling of the number of removed individual goes like uh, with time as time to the power Z, where Z is equal to two. So you really predict in, if you take into account stochastic effect, you predict a quadratic growth of the number of removed individual in time when the epidemic starts from a single seed. So you don't need to assume 
as some people ask, um, assume that th there is a spatial component, that uh, there is a fractal component like, uh, you know, a drop growing. Only stochasticity can be responsible for an exponent uh, equal to two. And actually we perform some extensive simulation and we can see that the number of removed individual as a crossover, so from, from if you start from a single seed, it grows uh, quadratically in time. If you start from many seeds, uh, it grows uh, linearly in time. So it's more driven by the deterministic kind of behavior. And actually it's very interesting when you look at the simulation because you can plot the data. So you have a stochastic dynamics in which the removed individual depend on time, right? In a stochastic way. So you can plot either the removed individual versus the, the average time needed to see this number of removed individual in different realization. And this is the first plot on the top. Or you can plot the time versus the, the expected number of removed individual respect to time. So you can do the average either on the x or on the y axis, and you get different curve, but always consistent with a growth that might be super linear. So the stochastic effect alone in a well mixed population can give rise in the critical regime to this behavior. So this is connected with with criticality on our point of view. And then you can ask how this distribution of duration of time and size of the break change and they change and they are modulated and they acquire this cutoff at uh, smaller time and smaller uh, outbreak size so that uh, uh, and this can, can be explained by some argument. For instance, the cutoff um, in the duration of time can be explained as having different independent branching process in some sense that give to different, uh, rise to different avalanche in the system. But then the cutoff at larger system size instead uh, take into account the correlation between these these different uh, branching processes. So we look at the uh, average duration and the fluctuation and the average outbreak size and the fluctuation. And we see that the average duration as a function of the initial number of, um, of seeds as a maximum. So as the, the initial number of seeds increase the duration of the plateau in average increases. And we also noticed that, you know, we had, we had mentioned this problem of large fluctuation. So there are large fluctuations so that the, the standard deviation in the duration of, uh, of the outbreak is much larger than the expected duration. And similarly for the break size, but this, uh, this role of the average and the standard deviation is reverse as N0 increase. So this means that as N0 increase, the uh, system becomes more predictable and the fluctuation are less pronounced. So uh, we also look at some scaling behavior. So this curve can be uh, risque for different n. These are very different n from, I think, um, 10,000 to 10 to the eight um, um, population size. So there is this clear maximum that depends on n in a very precise way. And if you want some detail, I suggest you to look at the paper. So um, the take home message is that this uh, super linear power law grow of the removed individual that has been observed in a number of cases in which uh, they were, it is consistent with the critical SIR dynamics. So we are not here mentioning how this SIR dynamics is reached. So I think it's clear that 
it is not reached by the dynamics, uh, it's the dynamic intrinsic to the SIR, but is is really affected by the the measure taking place for containing the epidemics. And then the duration of the plateau uh, is strongly affected by fluctuation, but these fluctuations are reduced if the number of infected individuals increase. And this expected duration of the critical outbreak as a maximum as a function of N0. So if you go over this maximum, you, you, you are going a little bit towards something, um, some effect of uh, similar to, to herd immunity. So let me just uh, move to the second problem we tackle. And here we uh, enter into the domain of network effect. So, and in, in, in this context, we will use um, the mapping between epidemic spreading and link percolation. So we, we, we consider P as the probability that an infected individual transmits the infector to a neighbor susceptible individual so that you know, at the end of the outbreak, you can think of the uh, population that has been infected as a percolation, percolation cluster in the contact network where the linked the link are present with probability P. So of course the reference point is still the branching process. So you have an infected individual and with probability P, it infects its neighbor, which can continue the infection. And this uh, process, so how this infection uh, propagates, can be modeled by a message passing approach. So you have um, a message going from I to J, indicating that I spread the virus, uh, the probability by which I spread the virus to J. And this is proportional to P, and it is this, uh, this spread occurs as long as node I receives at least uh, one uh, message from the other neighbor. So if node I, which is the node in the middle here, is infected at least by one of its other neighbor. So this is the basic of message passing for, for this um, percolation that interprets in, in some sense uh, epidemic spreading. And then you can ask yourself, what is the probability that node I is infected and node I is infected with the probability uh, is infected only if one of its neighbor is infecting it, and then you can look at the order parameter, which is the fraction of infected individuals, the expected fraction of infected individuals. So you, you can study these dynamics, and interesting, there is an epidemic threshold um, at PC um, given by the inverse of uh, lam lambda A, where lambda is the largest eigenvalue of something that is called a number tracking matrix, which is a matrix that goes from link to link and it express the fact that two links are have a node in common so that you know one link uh, can spread the infection if the other link has been used for spreading the infection. And this number tracking matrix is also a matrix that cannot go back from you know from the from a link cannot go back to the same link where it started from. For this is called non backtracking. So sometimes you don't have knowledge about the network. This is a very important problem when you use message passing approach. Sometimes you have the network, but sometimes you don't uh, have knowledge, exact knowledge about the network. So in that case, you might wish to average the equation over an ensemble of network with given degree distribution. And then you find um, very, very important equation for the probability that by following a link we reach a node that is infected. And this is a self-consistent 
equation in S prime. And then from this equation, when you solve this equation, you can characterize the order parameter, which is the fraction of infected individual in the population. So interesting from this equation, when we have discussed what happens, uh, what sets the percolation threshold uh, when you have perfect knowledge of the network, and this is the number tracking matrix, but if you, if you have, don't have perfect knowledge of the network, um, R0 is given by P and um, a term, uh, this term uh, average of K, K minus one over average of K, which is also called branching ratio that depends on the network structure. And this is diverging for some type of networks that are called scale-free that have a very broad degree distribution. So this implies that scale-free network have a vanishing percolation threshold. That means that uh, every epidemics, uh, regardless of uh, their transmissibility, can uh, lead to a supercritical behavior and in fact a finite fraction of the network. And, uh, um, and this is, is, is one of the uh, results that uh, worried network scientists about the possibility of pandemics because uh, we know that trans the transportation network, for instance, is scale-free. So uh, it's very easy in uh, a well-connected network that use air airline transportation network to observe pandemics. Another important result is that node with degree K are more likely to get infected. And so uh, apps are more likely to get infected. And this has also a good effect that, you know, has been one of main results in network theory has been that targeted immunization of app node can be efficient. Although it might depend on the minimal degree of the network. So sometimes there are overclaim of this efficiency. So, Given this, we um, try to uh, address uh, with message passing algorithm how this framework change if you have uh, a, an ideal uh, contact tracing app. And this is work with Anling Soon, Giacomo Rapizardi, and Alex Arena. So, of course, um, how the app work is uh, something uh, I think you know, but you know you have two individual, individual A and individual B. They all both adopt the app, so they can uh, the 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 mobile their mobile exchange a key when they are in contact, and then if one of the two um, uh, is uh, is tested and is is infected, um, the second person can be notified and can isolate before the onset of, of the um, symptoms. And this has been considered to be very important because in particular for COVID, uh, we know that there is a long period of incubation in which uh, the people are infected but remain asymptomatic. So what we modeled is a situation in which each individual is associated a variable ti, ti equal to one if the individual has the app or ti equal to zero if the individual doesn't have the app. So also we consider an ideal setting in which uh, if a person is uh, notified it will isolate immediately and, uh, you know, perfect. The app works perfectly. So, okay, so we are, we are not looking at the detail of how this app work. So the individual are classified with the individual with the app and without the app, and they can be infected and susceptible. So here you have an individual with the app that can be in contact with an individual with the app and an individual without the app. He gets the infection and he infects his neighbor with probability P. 
regardless if they have the app or not. But then at the second step, uh, while the person without the app continues spreading because um, before the symptoms uh, uh, arise, the person with the app, if he's notified immediately and the app is ideal, stop spreading uh, the virus. So while he, he might still get infected, he for sure stop the spreading of the virus. Uh, the situation is different if the initial seed doesn't have the app and then in this case, the epidemic proceeds uh, unchanged respect to the situation in which the app is not there. So a person with the app infected by a person without the app can continue spread the infection like a person without the app. So the message passing approach is modified. And then we have two terms. One term is the one that I highlighted here is a term that is only uh, there if Ti is equal to one. And the second term is only there if Ti is equal to zero. So the first term applied for people, for individual with the app and the second term applied for individual without the app. So we look at node I, which is individual with the app, and this individual will continue spreading if he gets an infection from an individual without the app, but he will not spread the infection if he is infected by the individual with the app. And this is captured by the first term in which the message from L to I, the message that arrives at node I is only absorbed, only considered if uh, it comes from a node without the app. So for the rest, for the second term, we are considering a, a node I without the app and this one will continue spreading the infection regardless of the status of the node from which uh, it is getting the infection. So uh, we consider this equation. So it, practically we need to go two step behind in order to understand what's happening in epidemic spreading with the app. It, it doesn't, it's not necessary just to go one step behind, we need to go two step behind. And with the, the probability that a node is infected is just unchanged respect to the usual epidemic spreading and node is infected if it receive at least one positive message. And we can look at the water parameter, right? So, and we can look at the epidemic threshold that now is PC is the inverse of lambda B, where lambda B is the maximum again value of a modified number tracking matrix. And interesting, this number tracking matrix is as elements that are proportional to the one of the, uh, are equal to the one of the number tracking matrix A, unless uh, no, um, unless uh, it uh, then the link, uh, the the initial link is a link connecting two node with the app. So this means that essentially, uh, it, for all concern about the continuous spreading of the epidemics. What is important is to remove the link between two people with the app because these links can be used to transmit the epidemics, but only for one, one step. And then if these links have, have if L with the app, in fact, I with the app, I will not be able to spread further. So this link cannot be really considered is an essential link for the global spreading of the epidemics. It just described this one-up um, uh, step. 
So here we assume that we know a perfect knowledge of the network and we know who's got the app and who's not got the app. Sometimes actually we don't know, we assume, we cannot assume that we know exactly who got the app and who has got the app and who has not. And the app adoption is actually a very important uh, problem. So it might depends on another epidemic spread in a epidemic staging of behavior of people just imitating is their friend and adopting the app for some sort of social pressure or uh, it can depend on some feature associated to the node. Here we uh, keep the modeling part to a minimum and we assume that uh, the adoption of the app only depends on the degree of the node in this contact network. So when we consider the degree of the node K, so um, we consider uh, in this case, uh, the average message of coming from a node with the app, which is uh, S hat IJT, and the average message coming from a node without the app, which is S hat IJN, and this equation in a locally tree like approximation, all this message passing in a locally tree like approximation, follow uh, this, um, this equation. So, here we know exactly the network, but we don't know anymore exactly who got who has got the app and who hasn't. And the next step in terms of um, requiring less of less knowledge about the actual system is to consider an ensemble of networks. So we can consider an ensemble of network with given degree distribution. And here we have an order parameter S, which is the fraction of impacted node, and then some auxiliary order parameter S prime N and S prime T, which are expressing the probability that by following a link with each node that is infected and doesn't have the app for S prime N and as the app for S prime T. Okay, so this now we have a self-consistent equation, set of the system of equation, uh, including the equation for S prime N and S prime T. Okay, so in, if we want to find the percolation threshold, we should find linear rise and impose that the maximal eigenvalue of the Jacobian of this system is one. So we do that and we find PC and PC is given by this expression. So it depends again on some version of uh, the branching process, the, the branching ratio. But then the second moment appearing in these two terms uh, is weighted with the probability that the node has adopted the lab or the node has not adopted the app. And this depends only on K. So, the result here is that this epidemic threshold is an increasing function of this kappa t, so uh, this branching ratio, uh, which is larger if node with i degree have adopted the app. So the epidemic pressure is larger, that means that the epidemic spreading is mitigated if node with I degree adopt the app, okay? So uh, a question that was um, circulating in the fall in particular was, what happens if not everybody adopts the app? And this leads to an optimization problem. So assume that you have um, kind of um, limited resources. So you uh, have a, a normal L, L1 on the number of people that have adopted the app. And uh, so you, you impose that uh, you have this curly T, which is uh, indicating the number of people that have adopted the app. And you want to mitigate the most the epidemics in this, uh, with, with, with this method. And so 
this correspond so you want to maximize the epidemic threshold so this correspond to maximize kappa t and of course the optimal solution here is that all nodes with degree larger than a given cutoff imposed by the limited resolve will adopt the app at 100% probability. So if you can incentivate app nodes to get the app, you can have a, a very strong improvement in, the, in, 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 in mitigating uh, the spread. And we have performed some uh, numerical analysis on real networks, real social networks and models. So the first plot is on a, a Poisson network of average degree four, and the other are this uh, social network, uh, uh, friendship network, these are. So the blue dots are um, the, the results of so the, the fraction of infected individual as a function of P, uh, the blue dot are in absence of adoption of the app essentially, and the green dot are in, uh, in, in presence of a adoption of the app, which is uh, optimized. So in which uh, um, all the nodes with degree greater than a cutoff value are, are adopting the app. And you see that the epidemic threshold can increase significantly. And this capture also the nonlinear effect of how, um, how the order parameter change with P in presence of this adoption of the app. And so this means that also uh, kind of 50% adoption of the app can be quite beneficial for, for mitigating uh, the spread of the disease. So we also look at what happens if you have a random adoption uh, and a mixture between random adoption with probability rho and this kind of herbicide um, rule that you know, impose a cutoff. And so you have a purely random strategy in which uh, there is no cutoff essentially, and you have just this randomness row and an optimal strategy in which uh, row goes to zero and all the app are adopted by the high degree node. So we can, uh, we can uh, study PC, the epidemic threshold as a function of row and as a function of the cutoff, you know, the yellow line here is with the cutoff 10. So, um, the, the node with degree larger than 10 have adopted the app for sure. And then you have a probability row that anybody adopts the app. And if this cutoff is, is decreased, the percolation, uh, uh, the, the epidemic threshold in, can increase significantly. So you can really have an important effect on, on, epi, on epidemic spreading with this. So the take home message is uh, so that we can uh, use the message passing theory for predicting uh, the epidemic spreading in a population of individuals which adopts a contact tracing app. And the, the optimal strategy is targeting the high degree nodes. And uh, at least in this assumption that the adoption of the app only depends on the, on the degree. And the analysis uh, capture the highly nonlinear effect of the reduction of the incidence provided by a certain fraction of adoption. Okay, so let me just move briefly to the third topic. I, I promise to be brief. Uh, so this is about multilayer networks and the role of correlation in affecting the epidemic spreading. So multilayer networks capture uh, a topology that is not formed by single network, but by a network of networks. So you have nodes di divided in nodes of different layers and the interaction can be within each layer and across different layer. 
And in this context, you can have a, a degree, a number of connection within the layer and number of connection across different layer. And you can have correlation of these two different type of uh, degrees. And this multi-layer network, this is just one of the large variety of multi-layer network you can draw, but this is a, a type of network which is reminiscent of a kind of modular society in which maybe you have different neighborhoods and maybe you have some nodes that have connection in many, um, connecting many different neighborhoods. And here I'm thinking of application related to the question uh, in, in COVID, uh, for instance, in New York, there was a lot of discussion about neighborhoods in which most of the key worked, court worker lived. So these are nodes that are well connected within their layer, but they're also very much connected across the layer because of, of their, uh, their work. So is there a way in which uh, the correlation between the degree inside the layer and across the layer can be, um, the correlation can be modulated in order to mitigate or enhance the spreading? So again, here you can use a message passing approach and this time, you have a message from a node I in layer alpha to a node J in layer alpha. And you can assume that the spreading occurs with different probability, depending if you, uh, if, if, if a node spread the virus uh, in, um, uh, across, within the same layer or across different layers. So that there are different modality, different probability that a node goes in, in, is in contact with an individual on the other layer. And so there is this different type of correlation. So you can have positively correlated degree. So for instance, a nub in one layer is a nub or is uh, it's connected preferentially to up of different layer. And uh, you have probability P of infecting within the layer and probability Q of affecting across the layer. And you can have negatively uh, correlated uh, degree. And so what are the effects of degree correlations in epidemic spreading? So uh, in, in this uh, work, that is actually a work that I've done uh, before COVID, um, without changing the number of connection and just uh, reshaping the correlation existing in the network, uh, you can show that um, the percolation threshold here, P QC and PC uh, in the blue uh, line occur for larger value of Q and larger value of P than for, and, and this is uh, the, the blue line is negatively correlated uh, multi-layer network while the red line is uh, positively correlated network. So you, you can change, modulate the epidemic threshold and reduce, uh, mitigate the, the spread by tuning suitably the, the correlation in the multi-layer network. So this take home message is that correlation can be tuned to enhance or mitigate the epidemic spreading. And so negative interlayer, interlayer degree correlation can be used to increase the epidemic threshold and mitigate the spread. So I reach my concluding remarks. So we ask, I, I, I told you uh, about some work that we're doing this year regarding trying to answer some theoretical question uh, raised by uh, the current pandemics. And the first question was, how predictable are epidemic plateau? And we try to answer this in a minimal um, full, uh, full mix population model. 
Then we have tried to answer the question of what is the role of contact tracing in epidemic spreading? So we use a network approach and message passing approach showing that also uh, adoption that is not at 100% can really significantly uh, mitigate the spread in particular if app nodes are incentivated to adopt the app. And we have studied uh, I, I told you about the role of correlation in a multi-layer network structure in, in shaping the, the in mitigating the epidemics. So I really thanks my collaborator, which I cited um, uh, already in the talk. And these are some papers. The last paper I didn't have time to, to talk about. And Anlin Soon has prepared some very nice codes. Uh, and you can find them in his web page, but also in my GitHub page if you want. And I finished with just two advertisements. Um, I thought you might be interested. One is um, that uh, we recently published a, collection, a book of collection of chapter on network of networks in biology. So this is a multi-layer net related network, but more in the um, molecular biology context. And that I uh, also uh, want to advertise JFIS Complexity, which is a new IOP journal. Uh, so I, I hope you consider submitting your excellent results there. Thank you so much. <laughs>